providing a pretty serious boost to car manufacturers that produce predominantly electric cars like Rivian, maybe Lucid and Tesla is a new change coming in America. Now the EPA are likely to finalize tough new rules to boost electric car sales in the United States. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. The ruling is expected to be America's toughest crackdown on gasoline powered cars while promoting well, faster electric car adoption. Now, obviously, Donald Trump is having fits about this. I don't know if he is or not, but, you know, it seems like he would be. But here's the thing. If more Americans were to buy electric cars, America's health costs would decline very, very fast. We've learned over the past three months that actually the cost from pollution from cars and from coal power plants and um, basically fossil fuels, but predominantly from exhaust from cars in cities, it's costing literally billions of dollars in America. We don't know exactly what that figure is, but it's actually believed to be much more than we previously thought because we've learned that the fumes from internal combustion vehicles are, are far worse than we previously thought. So a major regulatory order this week will decide the fate of the electric vehicle movement in the US. And I believe this will impact millions of Americans, but also um, it'll ch possibly change the second biggest polluting country in the world. It's, you know, helping America properly take climate change seriously. And to be fair, guys, um, you know, renewable energy has definitely improved significantly in America. So is EV adoption, but it's still a long way behind places like well, places like Europe, even even behind China. This week, the US Environmental Protection Agency or the EPA is poised to finalize emissions rules that will require a certain percentage, as much as 66% by 2032 of new cars to be all electric. Now, if you don't electrify, you'll be fined literally billions of dollars or have to buy regulated credits from car manufacturers that manufacture thousands, hundreds of thousands of EVs. And while there's only one of them right now, in other words, you'll have to give Tesla money. Now, that's what car manufacturers now have been doing for years, giving Tesla lots and lots of money. In fact, Tesla's, I believe, made $9 billion from regulatory credits over the past four years. So uh, analysts said that Tesla's regulatory credit revenue would go down. It's actually going up and it's probably going to go up even more after this decision has been made. Now, this ruling apparently is said to be announced uh, tomorrow. So by the time you're watching this video, it's probably already been announced. And these standards will first loosen the tough EV requirements between 2027 and 2030, but then mandate an aggressive ramping of EV sales from 2031 onwards. In other words, these revised rules will give car companies a bit of a pass on EVs over the next few years, but they'll be penalized much more so after 2030. The EPA originally proposed stringent federal emission standards last April. But as you can imagine, uh, a lot of the car companies got together. They went, ah, oh, no, this is going to be bad for us. And they lobbied the US government to, well, to slow this down, to, to stop it, essentially. The initial proposal required two thirds of new vehicle sales to be electric by 2032, up from 8% in 2023. Sounds crazy, but the thing is, I mean, China's about to hit 50% this year, so it's actually not, not that unrealistic. It also focused on systematically eliminating criteria pollutants, including particulate matter, which is the worst carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen oxides from vehicle emissions, all linked to direct health hazards among the masses. The agency received a huge rebuttal from dealer groups such as, of course, Toyota, General Motors and Ford, but probably more so from Toyota. They're well known for their lobbying against this kind of thing. And also from big oil companies who are scared of their profits going down. Now, the key reason here that this makes a lot of sense for these oil companies to um, fight against it is because, well, you guys in the US are actually, you're actually producing more oil than any other country in the world right now. Hit a new record last year in 2023. Now, many said the US was not ready for such an aggressive EV push as prices remained higher than internal combustion cars. On average in the nation's charging infrastructure is, well, not the best, but it is improving quickly. And environmental groups and public health advocacy groups are saying, well, you know what? Something has to be done. And electric car sales have actually begun declining significantly. 
primarily because of Tesla's aggressive sales push, it's put pressure on other manufacturers. And as a result, even with huge inflation, the cost of EVs has come down enormously over the past 12 months. And that's not just in China. That's definitely happening in the United States. The New York Times reported last month that the Biden administration was considering relaxing the EPA rules after pressure from car makers and big oil, and possibly from the UAW as well, I've heard. According to one estimate, the alternative ruling that's likely to pass will require EV penetration rates to reach 32% by 2027. Almost impossible for General Motors and Ford to hit those numbers, considering where they're at today, and Toyota, of course, and then increase every year after that, finally reaching 54% by 2030 and 68% by 2032. Now, if this does happen, uh, these automakers, they are so far behind uh, that they'll have no choice other than to buy carbon credits or pay massive fines. As of 2021, the transportation sector was the largest contributor to planet warming greenhouse gas emissions in the United States, accounting for 29% of total emissions. 29% are coming from transportation. So if you think it's not significant, well, clearly, yeah, it is. Now, Politico says this, those changes track with an alternative regulatory option that the EPA explored in last year's draft that ratchets down emissions limits evenly rather than front loads them in early years. Environmentalists at the time mostly shrugged at the prospect of the EPA preparing to finalize a rule that would give car companies more time to go electric potentially creating room for more gas and diesel-powered cars to be sold through the late 2020s. Now, Manish Bapna, the president of the Natural Resources Defense Council Action Fund, told reporters at a briefing Thursday morning that the anticipated final rule still deliver 95% of the draft's greenhouse gas emissions cuts. So let's be clear, it's a very, very modest change in carbon pollution. In other words, there's been lobbying, there's been pressure, but the Biden administration seems to have, well, held up to a lot of it. But my thing is here, that maybe they're trying to put this onto a future term. In other words, you know, maybe by 2028, 2029, 2030, the Biden administration won't exist anymore. And they're kind of saying, well, you deal with it. You, you future, you future community, your future politicians deal with this, this, this law we've created. Regardless of which alternative the EPA finalizes. The new rules will require EV sales to increase enormously from what they were last year, only just over 8%. That means car manufacturers need to offer a lot of competitive, cost competitive electric cars. Charging infrastructure needs to improve. We can't just have Tesla building out the majority of the you know fast chargers that actually work. The new standards would also help the US get closer to its commitment of reducing its emissions by 50% by 2030. Biden's approach to EVs is becoming a, a big issue as he faces a difficult and bitter election rematch against Donald Trump. Um, obviously, Trump has been, he's anti-EV, or at least he says he is, uh, because he believes that if we support EVs, then China will take over the world. But obviously, um, that doesn't really make sense because at the same time, Trump is saying he'll tax Chinese EVs 100%. So they're never going to succeed in North America anyway. Anyway. I believe here the key point is this. The Biden administration is supporting EVs in spite of immense pressure from fossil fuels and from basically the car industry, even from unions who are kind of getting, trying to force them to slow this down. So really got to say kudos to the Biden administration for almost virtually sticking to their guns. That's incredibly impressive. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye-bye.